Hi, Bugs. Hi, Bugs. Hi, Bugs. This is my girlfriend, Alyssa. And this is my girlfriend, Lauren. Okay, so over on our Instagrams, boo, boo, we asked you guys if you had any advice for us, any questions for us, and if you had any juicy Gay gossip. gossip for us. And you guys came through. We got like hundreds of messages mm -hmm. between the two of us. Mm -hmm. So if you asked a question and it doesn't get answered in this video, please know we read them all. And they were all fantastic. And they were all fantastic. <laughs> and I know, so I don't know what Alyssa picked and she doesn't know what I picked. So we're gonna be live reacting to each other's questions, mm -hmm. but please know we are so grateful for everything submitted. Yes. And I know for me, I was trying to pick some things that I thought were unique, but also lots of you could gain help from. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm kind of, I just screenshotted everything and I'm gonna yeah. kind of choose as I go through um, because a lot of times Lauren and I get sent the same things. Yes. And so we have to keep our options open on what we're gonna choose to answer. Yes, but I hope that these are helpful to you yes. and entertaining. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> First question, how do I experiment with girls in college without being that girl? It's genuinely not for points. That's interesting. Yeah. Which I think is like, I think this is a fear for a lot of people who have never been with girls. I think a lot of people are worried that they come off as using people to mm -hmm. figure out their sexuality. But I feel like for me, as long as you're just open and honest with the people that you're interacting with, that could be really helpful. Just like being upfront because nobody wants like to have a situationship with you and then to find out later that it wasn't serious. I'd say like be as open with your intentions as possible from the beginning. And also there are other people in college who are probably also looking to experiment. So maybe it's you experiment true. with each other. Yes, I agree. I think the, the wording of that girl is interesting mm -hmm. because I don't think there's anything harmful and not quite knowing what you want. I also think like when I think of like that girl, like I think of like straight girls kissing in yeah. front of boys for fun. I think as long as you're like being open and honest and also like keeping things mainly private yeah. between you and the person that you're doing whatever you're doing with, um, obviously like chat with your friends, talk it out. Um, you're obviously looking to figure out more about yourself. So you're going to want to talk to people about it. But as long as you don't have like bad intentions, which it doesn't seem like you do, like, yeah, you can't really control. I don't know. Everybody needs to experiment. Everybody experiments, even straight people. I mean, I, I know like a number of people who've like, who are straight, but then they've like hooked up with people and they ended up not liking them. That just happens sometimes. Yeah. So like you're gonna you're gonna kiss a lot of frogs before you find your right person. Yeah. I think you also have to be okay with people not wanting to experiment with you. Yes. Like I think for some like established gay people, <laughs> but like people have known they're gay and they want to have more serious <laughs> relationships or they want to have more like intimate things. They might not want to experiment with somebody who doesn't know if it's for them because maybe they don't want to get emotionally attached. Yeah. Or, and you just have to be okay with that because if they're not into it, then it's not gonna be good anyway. Yeah, just be as honest as you can. And usually when you're honest, there's a way, way, way greater chance of not hurting someone. Yeah. And if you do hurt someone, don't do it on purpose. Like sometimes like you're like, oh, I wanna hook up with you. And then somebody's like, yeah, let's do it. But then they develop feelings for you. That's not your fault because yeah. you have to take people at their word. You can't like mind read. Yeah. So be honest take the other person at their word and go from there. Yeah. First one done. I'm so surprised you can't see this cord. This one I thought was a good question. At what point are my standards too high? Oh. Isn't that interesting? That's very interesting. My immediate reaction to this is that your standards are too high if you're not willing to compromise at all. We all have things that we don't wanna compromise and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. But if you want to 
not take another person into account at all, then probably your standards are too high because you're interacting with a person. So you need to, people are gonna like live life slightly different than you, even if they're wonderful people. Yeah, unless this person was like handcrafted for your idiosyncrasies, there's gonna be something that just doesn't go with your plan for a significant other. I think you can have high standards for sure. And if having high standards means that you go through longer periods of time single, I don't think that's a bad thing no. either. I think some people lower their standards because they're lonely and then that ends up hurting them in the long run. Because and hurting the other person as yeah. well. Yeah. So have high standards, but I think Alyssa's right. I think if you're like wanting more of like a sim than a significant <laughs> other, yeah, you can't customize a person. No. People do change, yes, but you are not gonna change them. They find change within themselves. Yes, and sometimes they change in ways you won't like. And yes. that's okay too. Yes. I think that's totally okay. It's totally fine. I thought it was a really interesting question. That is I'm, an interesting question. I've never been like, my standards are too high, but I do think that there have been points in my life where I'm like, I don't wanna date anyone because I wanna live exactly the way I wanna live. And that's totally um, And that's totally too. valid. Yeah, I think my biggest personal growth has been during my longest period of being single. Mm -hmm. Because like you're truly just working on yourself and mm -hmm. figuring out what you like as a person. Spending a lot of time alone in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good question. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> okay. This one is not a question or uh, an advice. This was just, oh, is it gossip? No, it's just a cute. It was just a cute like queer joy one. Oh great! It just says getting married to my non-binary wife, and we're gonna queer up this wedding venue, and it just made me happy and smiley. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Here is a question one. Okay. Do you try to help girls who are in denial, or let them figure it out? Are they asking for help? Are they asking for help is the <laughs> number one question because if they don't want your help, girl, you're not gonna help them. You're not gonna help them and if anything, you might be pushing them away if you're trying to push your idea onto them. And you also, you truly cannot know if they're in denial. Yeah, also like what makes you the expert on yeah. gayness? You might think- That's us actually. <laughs> I mean, we are the experts on gayness. <laughs> we know if you're gay, we know if we're gay. Um, but I think that if somebody is not wanting to openly talk about their sexuality, it's probably a good reason within them that maybe they're not ready yet or maybe there are some external factors that they're not ready to face yet. So I'd say, just support them as a friend. Yeah. And when it's time, they will decide that it's time. I think you can't really like, what is it called when when you, like somebody walks into a room and all of their loved ones are sitting around? Oh, uh, an intervention. Yes, you can't like <laughs> cause an intervention in a positive way, I think, for sexuality. No, and also like, I think one of the most annoying things to me is when you're like, I'm gay and people are like, I know it the whole time. Yes. Like, I feel like that's so like, no, you didn't. Even if you had your suspicions, like there are so many people that in my mind, I'm like, you are gay, you are gay. And then they're not like, there's no way to know because uh, you are born this way, baby. So <laughs> like, <laughs> even if somebody seems like yeah. really, I also really fruity, they might not be. Yeah. Now more than ever, like, I feel like a lot of like queer culture and queer aesthetics are popularized. Yeah. So like just because somebody maybe looks gay doesn't mean they are gay. Yeah, I think it's also interesting because um, I was talking about this with one of my friends recently, but the topic of queer baiting is really interesting to me. Yeah. Because I think it's kind of nice now that celebrities are sort of, I mean, I think it's it's a mixed bag. Like at one at one hand, like, it is cool to be gay, but also like, like don't commodify things. But then also I think celebrities popularizing like wearing pearls and like, like dressing in different ways. It makes young people able to be able to express their queer identity without immediately having to come out. I've never thought of it like that. I thought you were going to say, I don't know if I phrased it where you're no, 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 no. I think like, I feel like there is like now more than ever, we're seeing mainstream celebrities like play with gender expression yeah, and that makes and embrace it that more normalized for everyday people to <laughs> also do that. I think that's good. I also think very, it, yeah, I feel like a lot of people right now are like, this celebrity is queer baiting, but it's like real life people can't queer bait. They're just 
expressing themselves in a way that maybe is not in like a cishet norm yeah. and people are running with an assumption. And how wonderful is it to be able to express yourself without having to immediately come out? Yeah. yeah. Like that that's not a luxury that we've had in even like previous years, like no. a couple of years back. Like yeah. it's, it's people get bullied recent. for stuff. So it's it's very recent and I think that's huge for yeah. Gen Alpha. Yeah, and also <laughs> like if you're like, I wish this celebrity would come out. I know that they're gay. I know in my heart they're gay. If you're just wanting like your queer representation in a celebrity, there are so many out celebrities. There are so many out internet figures and personalities. Like, yeah, truly, truly. If you're like, I wish my favorite influencer was gay. First of all, why aren't we your favorite yeah, influencer? Pick one. <laughs> pick a name. Pick a gay name out of a hat. <laughs> yeah, and that's on that. Oh my God, wait, this is crazy. Okay, I'm gonna share this. X made me drive to a certain city. I'm censoring the city. Okay, you're, you're live censoring. <laughs> X made me drive to a certain city so she could dump me and then try to get me back five days later. For bonus context, she was from country and emotionally abusive. She wanted to get married for citizenship and did marry the girl she left me for, parentheses too soon. And all my friends went to the wedding and no one told me about it till I found out on Insta. Oh my god! Those are not your friends, baby. That's also wild to make someone drive you to a location so they can break up with you. This How is actually really hard. Home? This is actually- no, I think- I don't- I think the person who messaged me drove to the location yeah. and then- so, Oh, so that person could break up with them? Yes. I think that's really hard because I- I think for long distance relationships, it's very difficult to decide whether you want to break up in person or break up not in person. Via techno. Via techno. Via technology. <laughs> I've been broken up with in so many ways. Facebook Messenger. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> FaceTime. Who, who, were you dating like a 53 year old man? Like who was using <laughs> Facebook <laughs> Messenger? Oh, just this awful boy. <laughs> this awful boy. <laughs> That's hor- like in high school? Yeah. He stood me up, then he broke up with me on Facebook Who Messenger. Who was it? We'll bleep it. <laughs> Ugly too. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Alyssa is the most kind person to her horrid exes. She'll like tell me something that is like the most vile thing and I'll be like, and they're stupid and ugly. And she'll be like, well, I wouldn't say that. I'm like, well, I'm like, why are you defending them? They're not here. I just think there are worse qualities to make fun of than somebody's appearance. And you know that I like don't but care that much is about subjective. appearance. Like, I feel like whenever I say someone's ugly, I'm not even talking about their face. I'm talking about yeah, their you're soul. Talking about their I'm talking about spirit. I'm saying your spirit looks like a crumpled up, dirty raisin. Like, I <laughs> don't care what your face looks like. I don't care what your body type is. I'm talking about your innermost being is rancid and it radiates out and it radiates like a stench yeah you know it's hard I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry your friends went to that wedding and I'm sorry I'm sorry you had to drive to a certain city that sucks for that person from a certain country and you know their citizenship that's crazy yeah Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. That sucks. Finding that sounds out like a bad situation. Finding out information from Instagram should be illegal. Yes. I feel like everything you see on Instagram should either be good news or think something you already knew. <laughs> yeah, or like a like new menu item at a fast food restaurant. <laughs> That's all I want to see <laughs> is people I already know, things I'm excited to learn, and fast food menu updates. Yeah, or like new makeup launches. Thank you for sharing. Well. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I hope oh. my censoring was okay. <laughs> I feel like I might be bi, but I also think I might be making it up. Oh, oh, that's interesting. I feel like I felt like I'm making up everything about myself. I think to an extent we all are. <laughs> I feel like you truly like with things so personal like sexuality, it is just going best off, based off of your best judgment of yourself because feelings are subjective most of the time. Mm -hmm. But I think that most of the time, if you're seriously questioning your sexuality, you probably are not straight. Yeah, usually people aren't choosing to question their sexuality. Yeah. Like usually I am not straight, so I don't know, but it seems to me and from People I've heard, like I've heard from various sources that like straight people don't various think sources. about <laughs> straight people don't think about being gay. Like yeah. Especially enough to just like I don't think about being straight. Like but actually I do like everybody questions stuff. Especially when you're young and you're figuring it out. Yeah. But I think um 
The best thing you can do for yourself in that questioning period is just to, like handle yourself with grace. Let yourself question internally. Don't judge yourself too hard, regardless of what the outcome is. If you're watching this and then years down the line, you're like, I remember when I asked those silly gay girls, I'm, I am straight. Yeah. Like, that's okay too. I knew a guy who came out as bi and then he took it back. Res rescinded. Nobody cared. <laughs> nobody, yeah, nobody cares. Nobody yeah. cares. Well, it was kind of funny. I think it was funny because he announced, like, he made an announcement and he took it back. <laughs> Go, a going, like, a going back <laughs> going in Going back post. in. Like, that's kind of funny, but, like, nobody actually cared. You know? Yeah, that's so funny. That's yeah. so interesting. <laughs> like, a formal announcement. I don't know if it was a post, but there was definitely, like, a formal gathering of, like... <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. As long as, as long as he didn't feel pressured to go back in, maybe he no, was like, I don't think. he's like, remember how I was in the closet? The closet didn't exist. Yeah. All right, you go, baby. Wait, <laughs> that was a bad high five again. What is one thing you wish you knew sooner that would have helped you come to terms with being queer? Oh, I have a good answer. Okay. I think it's that you can still like get married and like have a family mm. and like you can still like live the life that you imagine for yourself. The gender of the person that you're with doesn't change that. Even if it affects other relationships in your life, you can still live the life that you imagined and if you don't want to live a traditional, traditional, whatever. If you don't want to get married, that's fine. If you don't want to have kids, that's totally fine. But you can still do that. And yeah. it doesn't have to be like nuclear family. No, I feel like now more than ever, regardless of the gender of the person you're with, you can truly make the life you want. Yeah. Easier than ever mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the biggest thing that really affected me when I was coming to terms with my sexuality was I grew up in a very religious household and I think that really weighed on me for a long time and I think young Lauren was really grappling with the idea of, and, and it wasn't just like, oh, I grew up Christian. I grew up in this like independent Baptist, Southern, teeny tiny church where everybody knew every single person because there were like 30 of us. I think coming to terms with how I stood on my religion really freed me to explore my sexuality because for a long time I was like scared of this afterlife. So I think what really helped me was doing my own research about religion and talking to other religious people and other people who had left the church and left religion. And I think kind of like settling that for myself and ending up now where I, I don't subscribe to any religion, I feel like that really freed me. But I also know a lot of queer people who are still religious and find ways for those things to fit together in their life. For me personally, at the end of the day, I said, I don't think religion is for me at all. And that really helped me accept my sexuality in a faster way. Um, so if, if you or your family perhaps is very religious and it's coming, coming to a head with your sexuality, I would just recommend doing your own independent research, reading about other queer religious people or queer people who left religion and like seeing where you kind of like fall in that, if that makes yeah. sense. That totally makes sense. I mean, as you know, I grew up not religious at all Yeah. because both of my parents were raised very religiously and so they kind of went away from that a little bit which yeah. is like i mean i definitely have a different perspective on it from you because of that i'm also not religious but i do think that so often we're born and we're told things and we don't question them yeah and i think it's important to question everything question everything because for a long time i was like this is like my, my young self, I had accepted that I was a lesbian, I had accepted that I would never be with a man, and the only thing that was really a thorn in my side was my peace about it regarding religion. And then once I was able to kind of like remove that, and for mm -hmm. you, whether that's like leaving religion, finding peace with your religion, whatever, I just like- Finding a church that's good to you, yeah, or there are a temple so that's good to exactly, you. Exactly, there are so many like places of worship that accept their queer community, and if that's where you wanna go, then great. But if you decide that's not for you at all, that's great too. Yeah. That's my piece. Totally. Religion. Awesome. Are like, you gonna I bite my finger? gonna kiss it. <laughs> I love you, I love you. <laughs> I'm starting to question if I'm bi or a lesbian, but I'm in a long-term relationship with a man. Mm. What do I do? 
<laughs> I feel like this is a common one. I do think so. I think this is a really common one. Yeah. Um, I've definitely had people ask me about this before that I knew personally. And I think my advice to them at the time was to assess your happiness in your relationship and see if you're still excited by that relationship or if you're in it because you're comfortable with it and it's what you know. Like if you're with this man that you've been with for years and years and years and you are happy to continue that relationship, if you think about your future and you're like, it doesn't even matter that I like girls, if I'd be happy with, you know, starting family with this dude, retiring with this dude, whatever your life plan is, then you don't have to leave just because you like women, but if you're like, do I even like men at all? Mm -hmm. If you have a discomfort thinking about staying with a man long term. Or like, imagine that you are going to be with a man after this man you've grown comfortable with. If that causes you discomfort, then it could be a, you'll be, be a lesbian maybe. Uh, yeah, I think some a video that I recently saw was a lesbian talking about how she didn't realize that she was a lesbian for a long time because all of her friends did not like their boyfriends. Oh. And it's so common that like men do the bare minimum, don't come for me. <laughs> but it's pretty <laughs> common, like, it's pretty common that like people are mistreated by their boyfriends, right? Yeah. I think we've all heard some horror stories. I need you to know people who are attracted to men can be in situations that are good and a lot of people love their boyfriends and their husbands and want to spend time with them. Do you like to spend time with him or would you rather be somewhere else? This is, yeah, this is a hard one because it's like, what are the next steps? Yeah. I think, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna be controversial right now, I'm gonna say it. I think that you shouldn't live your life with any questions. Yeah. And if you personally can live with a what if forever, stay. But if you can't, I can't. Girl, go date some ladies. I think it's also like you as a bi person currently yes. who is considering maybe that she might be a lesbian. I really hope that you're seeking out queer community. Yeah. I know that that's hard because you might be in an area of the world where you can't. I encourage you to seek out other queer people and talk to them about their experiences because we can only help you so much. We don't know your situation, but having queer community can help you realize your queerness and it doesn't need to be romantic. Yeah, absolutely. Like having some friends you can really like explain your situation to who maybe see you interact with your current long-term partner. I feel like that that is a really great point. <sighs> it's a hard one. It's a hard one. It's I will hard. say the people who have come to me with this question before, this has happened twice to me now. Both ended up being lesbians and they both left their long-term boy partner. Yeah. And I think it was the right choice for them. And you just have to, I think it's scary to leave I think we're afraid of the unknown. Yeah, it, <laughs> and it's scary to leave your long-term relationship. Like if you're comfortable and happy and like, say you and this guy are probably friends yeah. at the bare minimum. You don't want to hurt him, but also you need to take care of yourself first yeah. in this situation. I want to be bold and say that being comfortable is not enough. Yeah. And that's not a way to I live agree. your life. I agree. Some days, yes. But I think I, if I don't see Lauren for one day, I, I would rather, I would rather spend my time with her. And I think ideally, that's how you should feel. You should feel about your partner like how you feel about your best friends or like hobbies you really love. You should be excited. And there are some days that are harder, absolutely. But generally, your life should be improving with the people you're with. I'm happier every day with her. Mm -hmm. And likewise. So something to consider. And I'm sorry if this is hard. I yeah. know that it's hard. It's totally hard. And I feel like we've all been in situations kind of like that. So yeah, I believe in you. I think my final consensus is up. It's up to you. I, Poppy Lore, think you should break up with him. <laughs> I think, <laughs> but I think, I think that's just because I, well, I think do you love him? <laughs> like, think about that too. Do you love him romantically? You can love him as a person and not love him romantically. Yeah. And I think that's true. You watching this deserve to love someone romantically. Yeah. And you will find that if this isn't that. Yeah. It's scary, but you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm
I'm more openly out and just had my first WLW breakup. How do I date and when? This is interesting because I think people are usually gonna do what they're gonna do. When you're fresh off of a breakup, I feel like there are two approaches and it's like rebound with mm -hmm. someone or don't. Yeah. I'm personally of the mindset, don't, unless yeah. you're being very open and honest with that with that potential rebound that it's not anything serious. Because I think if you were in a serious relationship, you need time to mm -hmm. heal. Yes. Figure out what you want, figure out maybe what you would like in the next relationship that you didn't have in that previous one. Mm -hmm. I'm very much, I'm kind of anti-relationship hopper because I don't know that it's necessarily the healthiest option, but some people roll with that and yeah. You know, I can't judge. I think that if it's your first WLW breakup, um, probably you're very heartbroken. I think that sometimes if you're in a relationship and it's been a relationship that has been dragging on and it ended very slowly, you might be more over your relationship than somebody whose relationship True. has ended out of nowhere. So I think that's something to take into consideration. Maybe, I don't think this is your situation, but like a lot of people that I know, because I'm gay, are breaking up with somebody to explore their sexuality. Yeah. So if you're breaking up with somebody specifically to explore your sexuality, you probably start dating maybe sooner than somebody who's like in tears every day from their breakup. Yeah. First WLW breakup is really hard. Um, I think date when you want to let somebody in again mm -hmm. and you feel ready to be good to that person and you feel like you're not bringing in, I mean, we all bring in interesting traits that we've gained in other relationships, right? Yeah. You need to be in a place where you're willing to work with somebody on maybe qualities within yourself that aren't your favorites. Yeah. You need to be willing to communicate. And I feel like usually right after a breakup, you're not willing to look at yourself in that way. Yeah, maybe. And I think that's fine. A period of reflection afterward to say like, what did I do in this relationship that I would not like to bring into the next one? Yeah. And it's easy to say that, like executing that is harder. Like we definitely had conversations, especially at the start of our relationship about like how we wanted our relationship to be mm -hmm. and like how like all of our bigger conflicts have been like miscommunications based on like just us having different communication styles. Yeah. So you need to be willing to take the time to understand somebody else. Yeah. Also sidebar, I think when you've broken up so with someone or they've broken up with you, the goal in how you feel about them should not be like hating their guts. Like, I, I, if, especially if you're like still in love with them or whatever, you might think that like hatred is the option, but I truly think the nicest way to view an ex of the past who you're not keeping your life is with apathy. Like not caring yeah. about what they're doing or totally. who they're or hanging out with. If things ended really well, wishing them the best. Yes, exactly. So many of my exes I'm friends with. Yeah, Lauren's really, I mean, you, in your life have really only seriously dated people who, who've who just been wonderful to you. Yeah. Which is great. I have maybe the luckiest dating track record ever. I just, I think it's because I only date people I really like as people and who I'd be happy to be just friends with. I think a lot of people date people they don't actually like hanging out with if yeah. they just have an attraction to them. But I think I'm just really lucky. I've dated some really cool people and they're all friends of the past, you know? Yeah. Oh, I also think you're just really good at being yourself. Like I can look back at my past relationships, some of who I've stayed friends with, some of whom I haven't. Um, and I can, the ones that I haven't, I've been like, oh, I see what I did wrong as well as what they did wrong. When usually when you first break up with somebody, you're like, they, they were not nice to me and blah, blah, blah. And, and maybe that's completely true. But also a lot of times like you have, you have a part in it and that's okay because we're people and certainly we make mistakes. And also when you're young and dating, you don't know what you want or who you want. Mm -hmm. So, and, and how do you start dating again? I don't know. How did you start dating the first time? Yeah. It seemed successful to a point. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry if that seemed to me. <laughs> no, no, I no. mean, you I got a relationship like, out of however you started it last time. If it was with a friend, think about like how, 
I think we all have different ways of finding out that we're attracted to people. Some people like to be friends first. Some people like to go on the dating app. Some people like to like m meet somebody in public like, and meet like cute. Yeah, so I think think of how you feel comfortable. Like I have only ever seriously dated people who I was friends with first. Mm -hmm. Like even Alyssa, like we were mutuals on TikTok for so long. And then we started hanging out as friends. And I know that for me, whenever I go on first dates that are like through a dating app, I never felt super compelled. Yeah, well, I'm not super compelled by like, appearance is not the first thing I look for. And I find that people are very different, like texting than they are in, in person. person. Yeah. Um. So the dating apps were not really my scene, but I think like my, my uncle met his wife on Tinder. <laughs> and snaps for him. Well, there you go. And they're very happy. They have two kids. Wow. Yeah. He <laughs> received so many freaking advice requests, juicy gossip. So we didn't even get into any crazy gossip yet. Yeah, except for mine. Except My for one. Yours. Your one gossip. About the certain oh. city and the certain country. X. We want to answer more of these. Yeah, so we'll make another one of these videos. So we're making another one of these videos, which will also come out this week. So yes, if you <laughs> submitted a question and it didn't get answered, make sure to check out the next one because we are going through the same, the same batch. question, yeah. New questions, same batch. Make sure you follow, like, hit that bell, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you next time, bugs. Yes. Bye, bugs. Bye, bugs. Bye, bugs. Bye, bugs. <laughs>